Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity, and welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today's topic is number 62, the Irish recatechize Christendom. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are on the yellow time period, which we have called Kingdom. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can find them on our website. Well, we've talked about it a lot already, and I have to talk about it more again, because it's such an important event. I'm referring to the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476, and that event had huge ripple effects all throughout the ancient world. Do you know what a ripple effect is? Have you ever thrown a rock into a still pond? When the rock splashes into the water, waves in the form of circles start to spread out from where the rock splashed into the water. Those circle waves are called ripples. Did you ever notice just how far out into the water those ripples go? If you imagine that the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 was like throwing a rock into the water, then you can imagine that ripples went out from that event that reached far away and for a long time. Rome controlled the whole ancient world, so when it fell, everywhere else was greatly affected. By the year 476, many of the people in the Roman Empire were Catholics. But when the barbarians flooded into the Roman Empire, they brought with them their pagan religions. Now Western Europe had to be re-catechized again. Now meanwhile in 476, there was a small island full of brand new Catholic saints and scholars. This island had just been converted to the Catholic faith in the mid-400s by a very famous saint, and I think you've probably heard of him before. I'll give you a hint. Think of shamrocks. Did you guess St. Patrick and his conversion of the, of the Irish people? If you did, then you are right. Many brave and devout Irish missionaries sailed across the sea and started to teach the barbarians about the Catholic faith. They took with them many handwritten copies of the sacred scriptures and slowly and laboriously helped the barbarians to settle down into communities around local Catholic churches where they would be baptized, receive the sacraments, and learn to live as good Christians. These Irish missionaries kept the light of faith alive throughout the old Roman Empire in the land of the new barbarians. Sometimes you will hear this time period called the Dark Ages meaning the time after that Rome fell. But these Irish missionaries were a source of heavenly light. They founded monasteries, schools, libraries, and churches, where they preserved and transmitted the classical and Christian heritage. And now Mrs. Charity will tell you something else about the Irish and what they contributed to Western civilization. You'll never guess what it is, but if you can read, you use it every day. Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Mr. Charity was just talking about the Roman Empire. Did you know that the Romans spoke and wrote in Latin? But it was not very easy to read what the Romans wrote because they smushed all their words together without spaces. The Irish, on the other hand, did not use Latin, but instead spoke Irish or Gaelic. When the Irish sailed across to recatechize the barbarians after the fall of the Roman Empire, they made it much easier to read and write because they put spaces in between their words. So, if you read and write with spaces, like we all do, make sure to thank the Irish. Welcome back. I am sure glad the Irish gave us spaces in between our words. How about you? Now let me tell you a story about the famous Irish missionary, St. Brendan. He sailed to many places far and wide, and he founded many monasteries. In the early days of the Christian era, when the world was still a vast and mysterious place, there lived an Irish monk named St. Brendan. He was known for his faith and his yearning to spread the word of God far and wide. St. Brendan believed that beyond the rolling hills of Ireland, across the tumultuous sea, 
lay lands that had yet to hear the gospel of Christ. One day St. Brendan gathered a group of like-minded monks and they together built a sturdy karach, a boat with wooden frames and leather hides. They stocked it with provisions and trusting in God's guidance, set sail into the unknown. The sea was both friend and foe. It carried them to wondrous places, islands with lush greenery, waters teeming with fish, and skies filled with birds of every color. But it also tested their resolve with fierce storms, towering waves, and treacherous whirlpools. They encountered marvels that no Irishman had ever seen, floating islands that vanished at their approach, sea creatures of enormous size, and pillars of crystal rising from the depths. Each sight was a testament to God's creation, and St. Brendan praised him for the wonders that he revealed. This journey was long and arduous, but Brendan's spirit never wavered. He and his companions landed on distant shores where they met people who lived without the knowledge of the gospel. St. Brendan spoke to them of God's love and salvation, and many hearts were turned to the light of Christ. After many years, St. Brendan and his fellow monks returned to Ireland. They brought back tales of their incredible voyage, inspiring others with their faith and courage. The story of St. Brendan's navigation became a beacon of hope, a reminder that with God as their compass, no journey is too perilous, no mission impossible. That's all for today. Make sure to come back for the next video when we're going to learn about the first crusade, a very important thing to know about. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Visit our website www.gloriousheritagecartoons.com where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, and see you next time.